So my dear learners, welcome back to the today's lesson. Today, our lesson is going to be climate. And uh, under climate, we are going to learn traditional methods of observing weather. traditional methods of observing weather. Before we move to that, maybe I would like to take you back to what we learned in the previous classes. We defined weather as the change of atmosphere. The change of atmosphere from time to time. Maybe it is sunny, windy, cloudy and these changes the weather changes when they are observed and recorded for a long period of time it's what will give us what we call climate so in class 7 you also learned about climate and the factors that influence climate in class 8 we are going to look at traditional methods of observing weather traditional there were traditional weathermen who knew how to tell the, 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 the weather. For example, there are ways they were using to tell if it is going to be a rainy season soon or a dry season. So some of the ways they were using to tell the weather, number one, observing the behavior of some animals. Observing the behavior of some animals, for example, a cow, the excitement of a cow. would show that there will be rain soon. You find a cow is excited, running at a skelter in the compound. That one showed that there will be rain very soon. Cows knew how to smell the, the rain. Another one is uh, under observation of some animals, the croaking of frogs. Croaking of frogs. Frogs normally croaks when there is rain or when it is uh, almost a rainy season. So this one also indicated a rainy season or rain, rainy season. Croaking of frogs. You know, uh, most uh, mostly frogs. They that is their mating season. They normally mate during the rainy season, so when they smell the rains, they start croaking. So you find that most frogs, they croak when there is almost rain. Another one is observing some plants. Number two, in science, you have learned that there are some plants that shed their leaves during dry season. So some plants shed their leaves, shedding of leaves. Shedding of leaves in some plants indicated that it is a dry season. Why do they shed their leaves? They shed their leaves to conserve the little water that has, they have absorbed from the, the soil. They are, are trying to avoid losing the little water that they have so absorbed from the soil through transpiration. Plants lose water 
through their leaves, a process called transpiration. I believe you have learned that in science. So they are shedding their leaves. The, the, the leaves is what, where we have the stomatas, where they lose water through. So they shed their leaves to avoid losing water through a process called transpiration. Shedding of leaves will help them to conserve the little amount of water that are, they have absorbed from the soil to, uh, when it comes to dry period. Another one, flowering of some plants. Some plants, for example, jacaranda trees, uh, after a long period of a dry season, you'll find that they, when they start flowering, it indicated that a rainy season is soon. Flowering of plants, for example, I've given an example of a jacaranda tree. They normally flower when it is almost a rainy season. When a rainy season is sown, they tend to flower. They tend to flower. Number three is migration of birds. Migration of birds. So uh, an example is uh, the birds and, and insects. Let me add insects here so that it becomes one point. Insects. So, for example, the safari ants. Safari ants normally move when it is almost a rainy season. They move from the low, uh, the lowland areas. Lower areas, they move to uh, raised areas, highland areas, when it is almost a rainy season. So when you must see the safari ants moving, it means that a rainy season is soon. That is the safari ants. Then we have the locusts. Locusts, migration of locusts indicated a dry season. Then birds like quilla birds. Quilla birds indicated rainy season. So, birds and insects, birds and insects, they migrate. For example, we have talked of safari ants, and safari ants have said when it is almost the rainy season, they tend to migrate from lower, uh, lowland areas, they move to raised areas. Locust, the migration of locust indicated a dry season. Quilla birds, rainy season. Number four is observing the clouds. Clouds, yeah. observing the clouds, dark clouds, yeah. dark clouds indicated rain, dark clouds indicated rain, so mostly in the evenings you find that when there are dark clouds, heavy dark clouds that are found low in the sky, they indicated a rain. Then. Number five, we have sudden rise in temperature at night. Sudden rise, rise of temperatures, especially at night, indicated rain or rain is soon going to fall, especially after it has, uh, during a dry season, mostly the nights are cold. So you find that after a long period without rainfall, and then there is a sudden rise of temperature, especially at night, it indicated that rainfall is soon. It will soon rain. Then number six, smell of moist soil.
when it is almost raining, sometimes even you, you people, there are a number of you who have tested soil. Sometimes when it is almost raining, you find that there is that nice smell of soil. The soil smells nice and you are getting attracted to that soil. You just want to, 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 to taste it or, or, or eat it a bit. So that indicated that the rain is soon falling. It also indicated rain or a rainy season. Then observation of faces of the moon. In science, I, I think that is science class four, you, are, you learned about the phases of the moon, whereby you have the new moon, the crescent, first quarter, last quarter, full moon, jivas and the rest. So, phases of the moon here, when it is new moon, the appearance of new moon, the appearance of new moon indicated rain or rainy season while full moon full moon no rain When it is, it's been raining, it's been raining, and then maybe in the evening, a full moon appears, the appearance of full moon. That shows that the rain is going to end. There will be no rain now. You now start preparing for a, a period without rainfall, a dry se season now. But the appearance of full moon indicated that the rainy season is almost or it's almost raining. Then we also have change of direction of wind. Change of direction of wind. The traditional weathermen knew how to tell uh, the weather by observing the change of direction of wind. So, We can continue now. They are making a road outside. It is this side, not this side. Yeah, it's this side. We can continue. Okay. The, the traditional weathermen knew. You will edit that where there was an interference with that. there was an interference. So the traditional weathermen knew how to tell the weather by simply observing the direction of the wind. They knew that when wind has been blowing from maybe west to east and then it has suddenly changed from east to west, they could tell whether it is going to be a rainy season or a dry season. So these are some of the ways of observing weather in the past or traditional methods of observing weather. We have talked of behavior of some animals, observing some plants, 
uh, for example, the deciduous trees which shed their leaves during dry season. Flowering of plants, for example, the jacaranda trees that flowers when it is almost, when the rains are almost falling. Migration of birds and insects, we have talked of safari ants, rainy season, locust, dry season, and pillar birds, rainy season. Observing the clouds, dark clouds indicated rainy season, uh, sudden rise of temperature, especially at night, show that there is, uh, soon go, uh, it is soon going to, to rain, smell of moist soil, also indicated rainfall, observation of the faces of the moon, new moon indicated rainy season, while full moon indicated no, no rain, and lastly, change of direction of wind. Let us move to the modern methods of observing weather now. Observing and recording. Here you observe and record. Recording weather. So here we are mostly going to borrow the knowledge you have in science. Uh, you have done this in science, I believe. So we are going to borrow that knowledge and bring it here because it is the same thing. The weather instruments are the same. The aspects of weather they, uh, are, uh, they, they measure the same. The units are the same. So here I, I, I want to give you an activity. As a learner, I want to give you an activity. You are going to have this activity. Uh, you are going to draw the instruments, so you are going to have a table. Your table is going to have these columns. Here you are going to draw the instrument. Here you write its use or name first. First of all, you name it. The name of the instrument the use and then the units. For example, I want to give you an overview of what you are going to do. An example of the weather instrument, you are going to draw fifth, number one, you are going to have a wind sock. If your number one is a windsock, you are going to draw a windsock here. You name it windsock. Windsock is used to measure the direction of wind. and strength of wind. Direction and strength of wind. Unit here, we don't have the unit for wind sock. That is, an exa that is example one. So, as a good learner, I expect you to borrow the idea you learned in science to complete this table the weather instruments. I want you to cover the following weather instruments. Uh, I want you to have a rain gauge. Wind vein. Wind sock I've mentioned. Barometer. Hygrometer. and thermometer. Have the diagrams of these weather instruments in the first column, then the aspects of weather, the measure, and then the units you are going to 
do that. Borrow the knowledge you have from science. Then from there, let us move to the next part, that is factors affecting climate change. factors affecting climate change. So some of the factors that affect climate change, we have human factors. When we talk of human factors, we are talking about things that man facilitates, man, things that man, man does that leads to the climate change. Things that are done by man that leads to the climate change. Man is the facilitator here. So number one, deforestation. Deforestation, this is the clearing of forests, cutting down of trees without replacing you are clearing the forests. We know that trees help us in the uh, reducing the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Trees take in carbon dioxide uh, in making their foods, that is photosynthesis, during photosynthesis. So when we clear the forests, you will realize that there will be too much carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. So deforestation will lead to too much carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. When trees are cut, the animals will breathe out carb uh, carbon dioxide. During breathing in, we take in carb uh, oxygen and we breathe out carbon dioxide. So when we take out carbon dioxide and there are no trees to consume the carbon dioxide, the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere will be increased when there is deforestation. Number two, which is still uh, almost connected to this, is interference with the water cycle. interference with the water cycle. Uh, these trees, the trees, we said that they act as the water catchment. Trees helps in the formation of rain. Uh, trees absorb water in the soil through uh, their roots and then this water is lost into the atmosphere through their leaves, a process called transpiration. This water vapor will condense to form clouds. These clouds, when they become heavy, they again fall back as rain. Then the rain water is what the plants absorb again, goes back, uh, absorbed, transported to the, to the leaves, and then lost again to the atmosphere 
then forms the clouds again, then the clouds fall as rain. So when trees are cut, when trees are cut, there will be no formation of rainfall now. We have interfered with the, for, uh, the, the, the water cycle because one part is not there. Trees are not there that will absorb the rain and then through transpiration, clouds to be formed. So there will be no formation of clouds because there is no, uh, we, we don't have the trees here. So when forests are cleared, there will be no rainfall in that area because it is the forest, these trees in the forest that attract rain. Number three is uh, afforestation. Afforestation and reafforestation. Afforestation is a planting of trees to make a new forest. You are planting trees on a virgin land where no forest existed before to make a forest. You are making a new forest while reafforestation is planting trees to revive a forest that was there but was cleared. You are bringing back a forest that existed but was cleared. So reforestation is planting trees where others had been cut to make another forest, while here you are planting trees to make a new forest. So afforestation and reforestation will help to reduce the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and again they will facilitate the, the water cycle. Then another one, number four, is destruction of the ozone layer. Ozone layer is a thin layer of oxygen in the atmosphere that protects us from harmful rays of the sun from reaching us. So you find that there are some, in uh, some industries produce harmful substances into the atmosphere that destroys the ozone layer. When the ozone layer is destroyed, those harmful rays from the sun will now be reaching us and this will lead to skin problems and even eye problems. They can lead to eye and skin problems when the ozone layer is uh, destroyed. Uh, the last one is uh, Industrialization also. Industrialization, these industries, just as what I've said here, they produce harmful substances into the atmosphere that interferes with the atmosphere. They interfere with the atmosphere, they increase, too, uh, it will lead to too much increase of carbon and carbon dioxide in the at atmosphere, and this will lead to the rise of temperature in the atmosphere. Those are, those were the human factors. Then uh, we have natural factor. Here we are going to talk about one that is uh, volcanic activity, volcanic eruption or volcanic activity. During volcanic eruptions or volcanic activity, there are uh, a lot of dusts a lot of dust, a lot of uh, gases, uh, sulfuric gases that are produced into the atmosphere. This interferes with the formation of rainfall. Uh, sulfuric gases will lead to the formation of acidic rain. We shall have 
too much temperatures into, uh, uh, in, in, in the atmosphere, the temperature will rise because of too much uh, those carbon gases that are released into the atmosphere. The last part, let us look at impact of climate change on human activities. When the climate of an area changes, how will it interfere with the human activities? Like we are talking about deforestation. Deforestation. Deforestation will lead to drying up of river, rivers. drying up of rivers, trees, just as, uh, as we have said, these forests, they act as water catchments. So when they are destroyed, and uh, this is where most rivers have their sources, the rivers will dry up because there will be no water. These are where we have most of the sources of the rivers. Most rivers, their sources are in the, the, the forests. And when these forests are cleared, most rivers will dry up. And when these rivers dries up, other problems will come in. For example, another problem is uh, interference with the high, uh, production of hydroelectric power. Some rivers are used to trap electricity. So when they dry up, the production of hydroelectric power will be interfered with. Another problem that will rise as a result of that is uh, uh, water for irrigation. So there will be reduced production of foods because of uh, an interference, an interference with uh, the, the the water volumes in the in the rivers. The, the rivers that are used majorly for irrigation when they dry up there will be a reduced production of food. Uh, another one, the harmful rays, I talked about the destruction of ozone layer. So these harmful rays, harmful rays from the sun, due to the destruction of ozone layer may lead to uh, skin and eye diseases. The destruction of ozone layer may lead to the harmful rays from the sun reaching us, and that will lead to the skin and high eye diseases. Then, too much floods. Floods, floods will destroy the roads, destroy roads, bridges, And this will affect trade. It will affect trade. Goods may not reach markets on time. For example, if they were to pass through a bridge and that bridge is destroyed. By floods. When that bridge is destroyed by floods, goods may not move from one 
area to another area if they were to pass through uh, that bridge. Number two, if the roads are destroyed by rains, the same problem will arise. So over flooding or floods is also another problem. Then uh, harsh weather conditions. Harsh weather conditions, for example, it has changed from a cool and wet climatic condition to maybe hot and dry condition. Harsh weather conditions will affect wildlife also. They affect wildlife. Wildlife. For example, most wild animals, their natural habitat are these forests. So when these forests are destroyed, eventually the climatic, re, uh, the climatic condition of that area will automatically change. And uh, when it changes, these wild animals will also escape. They will run away, some will suffocate and die, and uh, this will affect tourism sector. This will affect tourism. Tourism earns as foreign exchange. So when we destroy the forests where these animals are and the climate changes, these animals, some will die, some will run away, some will suffocate and die, I mean. And when that happens, tourism sector will also be affected. Up to that point, I beg to stop there. Today, we were learning about climate. We have looked about traditional methods of observing weather. And we have talked of very many ways uh, the traditional weathermen were using to observe weather. We have talked of observing the clouds, and we have said that dark clouds indicated rainfall. We have talked of observing the behavior of animals. We have given an example of a, an excited cow. The excitement of a cow indicated rainy season, a rainy season. Croaking of frogs, the frogs indicated a rainy season. We have also talked about observing or the, the migration of birds and insects. The safari ants indicated rainy season. Locusts indicated a dry, a dry season. The behavior of some trees. Some trees tend to uh, shed their leaves during dry season, especially the deciduous trees. They shed their leaves to conserve the little water that they have absorbed from the soil, not to evaporate through transpiration. We have also, uh, I've also given you an activity. Remember that I gave you an activity here under modern methods of observing weather. Modern of, uh, methods of observing and recording weather. You did this in science, so you borrow that knowledge in science to complete this table. I said you draw the weather instruments, you are going to draw a rain gauge, wind vane, barometer, hygrometer, and thermometers, and then their uses and the units. Lastly, we have talked about factors affecting the climate change. We have talked of human factors and natural factors. Up to there, I beg to stop till we meet in our next lesson. Thank you.